Right, good morning everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time of day you're actually watching this recording. Uh, my name is Carl, Carl Lehman from Dream It, Planet, Live It. Uh, I'm the author of this best-selling book, Dream It, Planet, Live It, of the same name. And we have been doing this Coffee with Carl series. And the reason why I set this all off was when the COVID pandemic sort of hit and social media was full of negativity and just people mood hoovers draining you of your life energy. I thought what I want to do is get some great thought leaders, some people at the top of their game to really come to the party in this regard uh, and actually share some positivity. So I'm joined today by Simon Dolly from Anthera Marketing. So Simon, say hi to everyone. Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Simon Dolly, it says from Anthera Marketing. And I saw you just nip up there and go to your own bookshelf. <laughs> it's because you went and got your book, so I thought, oh, I'll do the same thing. And here's what I said <laughs> earlier. So yes, it's, even though I'm called Simon Dolly, I have published a novel under the name Simon Tozer. So there we go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, just to set the scene, um, Simon, the, the, the whole philosophy behind this is to interview great people like yourself and hopefully help other people out there who are kind of struggling. Um, and it's about not just helping them survive, but actually sort of thrive in the current economic climate. Um, so with that in mind, this, this book that actually sort of retails on Amazon at 1099, if people want to go to dreamitplanetlivitbook.com forward slash offer, you can get a copy of that book right now for, for a pound. I've got limited supplies um, at that level. Um, uh, but if it helps you get some clarity about where you are, where you want to be, um, then that's absolutely brilliant. But the reason why I've asked Simon to join us on the call today is when I moved down to Devon, which would you believe is almost two years ago now, Simon. Uh, Simon was one of the first business people that I met down here. And I thought, wow, he's a great guy. He's got long hair. He wears flip flops and shorts. He's, he's cool, but he runs business seriously as well. So Simon, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your own background, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm firstly, I'm one of those rare things. I'm a, somebody who lives in Devon who is from Devon. In fact, <laughs> as Carl knows, I mentioned family history and I, my recent DNA test showed I was 78% Devon. So that's quite, an, quite, quite a lot. I have got a 10% German in there, Carl, you'll be pleased to hear. Oh, so good right. Um, but yes, I, I grew up in Devon, uh, moved away and lived up in Liverpool for 11 years, worked in the marketing business. Interesting with what's going on at the moment. The reason I moved back to Devon was I um, got moved on because of foot and mouth at the time. This is in 2001. People might not remember, but it was quite dramatic for some businesses. Uh, I knew people in the horse racing industry that all stopped. And in my case, travel non essential travel to Ireland stopped completely. So my job ended because we I worked for Aer Lingus Holidays, right? Just successfully won a Guardian Award for Brochure of the Year, you know, just putting everything together for 2001. It was going to be a great year. We've been really happy. And then everyone said, you can't go on holiday to Ireland. So it's not as extreme as the current situation, but that stood me in good stead for what's going on at the moment, I think. Yeah. And all the businesses are going, oh, God, you know, it's, you know, it's terrible. But it's the ones who think and evolve who will succeed. And it Absolutely. sounds awful that, you know, you succeed out of something terrible like we've got going on at the moment. But it's the ones who actually think about it. And it's not just marketing, it's all the planning and procedures who will, who would do well. So that little situation was, was actually quite useful for me in looking forward. So, I mean, I'm a firm believer that out of adversity comes opportunity. It, it's just, you know, the one thing that we control in all of this is our own thinking. There are many things that we we can't control. You know, from a psychological perspective, you have what we call the internal locus of control and the external locus of control. Now, the external stuff you can't control. That that's just that's coming this way. But we can control what goes on between our ears here. So, with that in mind, you know. How, I mean, you're a successful businessman. You've been in business many years. You've run a number of different businesses. We'll probably unpack that, I'm sure, as we go throughout this conversation. But what would you say your key to success is, bearing that in mind? I think it is that foresight and adaptability. You know, I've made mistakes yeah. just like everybody has. Um, my, myself and my other half, Lisa, we started a business when we both had other businesses. So I was the MD of a digital marketing agency. She ran her own retail and beauty business, and we saw an opportunity in Topness for a retail business, took the premises, we turned it into a deli because we thought there was an opportunity there, 
we didn't get it right. So we made mistakes. Partly, we didn't know enough about it and we couldn't put the time into it. Right. So what we then did is put the time into it. So I actually sold my other business to, to concentrate on it and looked at it and looked at it from different angles. And that's where a lot of businesses don't do. They, they follow the same line as everybody else and don't get it right. So the first thing I always say to everybody is be yourself. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Whatever you do, be yourself. Play to your own strength. So I started a cafe business, you know, deli, restaurant. Well, I was good at marketing. So I got the word out there. I did a good website, used social media. Hey ho, we become number one restaurant in Topness on TripAdvisor, and suddenly we're doing really well. And I did outside catering and marketed that, and suddenly we got schools and other businesses wanting us to do catering from for a tiny place. That was my strength. It was marketing and thinking of it differently because no disrespect, there's lots of chefs and cafe owners who do the same thing and say, oh, this is how you all do it. But we all know it's the ones who do things differently. You know, you look at Elon Musk. Yeah. He came up with something totally different to what the rest of the um, industry were doing. Yeah. He's got a few bob now, hasn't he? <laughs> so, you know, and whether you like some of these people or not, you've got to look at what they do. And, and that's, for me, I think is so important is they've got those ideas yeah. and they turn it into something successful by using their own way of using it. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's that ability to kind of pivot right now and be creative in terms of your business. Um, I mean, yesterday I had my haircut, can you tell? Um, and I, I went to uh, this place in, <laughs> I went to this place in Timoth, uh, and uh, it was just amazing how the different um, attitudes that were there. So when I went, I literally had my haircut on the Friday before Boris Johnson said, right, that's it. Don't go to the pub tonight. We're locking down. Um, and normally you, you kind of sit there and you wait, goodness knows how long to be able to be seen by somebody because they didn't run an appointments thing. Uh, it was a very cool kind of surf shack type sort of place where you kind of go and get your haircut and all the rest of it. Anyway, yesterday go in and the two young guys are there. They're running the business and uh, I go in with Jacob, who's my, my youngest son. And it was just a different experience altogether. You know, they were happy. They were relaxed. They said they love this appointment process. They will never go back to people just rocking <laughs> up. Um, yeah. And they do this, 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 and differently in their business now. And that, you could see on their faces, and they were well equipped for what, what the new norm is and how they have to run that business. But it's just a delight. You know, they were young, innovative people who just pivoted their business. And actually, they just said, you know, we, we're doing good. Um, and we can't ever envisage going back to the old way that we did business. So I, I'm thinking, I mean, you, you're into kind of marketing, and that's a broad subject, isn't it? I looked at your LinkedIn profile. We've got website design, digital marketing strategy, search engine optimization, so, social media planning and training. Can we unpack this a little bit, Simon? Yeah, you sure. Know, talk me through what you do exactly. <laughs> if, if I could work that out, I could tell. No, it's, it's one of the things <laughs> where... Actually, marketing is one of those subjects that people overanalyze. And, and you, came, you came to it there. It, it is sometimes really overanalyzed and people don't understand it properly because people try and put layers in. No disrespect to everyone who's got you know, marketing degrees or awards and that type of thing. For me, that's not the key thing. Uh, it's not all the buzz phrases. It's not what you're taught into, you know, university, whatever. We all know people who teach university, do they live in the real world? That's no disrespect to them. You yeah. know, are they at the cutting edge? The people like your Elon Musks or some people you really don't like, you know, who've succeeded in marketing, haven't got degrees, haven't got any qualifications. They've got something about them. And so what a lot of, a lot of what I do is help businesses to see what they've got that they can succeed with. Right. So when I started in marketing, it was after I left university, I went, I worked in the tourism industry and I worked for Merseyside Tourism, Northwest Tourist Board, helping to promote tourist attractions and hotels, that type of thing. I then fell into the tour operator industry, particularly of Ireland. So I worked a lot with Irish tour operators and it was, selling something to people and it's selling ideas mm -hmm. in the case of tourism it's it's 
it was dreams of people. So mm. a really, really simple adv- example of, of uh, marketing was we used to do, we started self-catering cottage holidays to Ireland. We used to get good ferry deals. We did deals with cottages and we sent people from the UK over to Ireland. Yeah. The ones that sold best were the ones that had something different about them. So it's a thatched cottage. Yeah. It was the one with a donkey in the, you know, the field next door. It was the one with the open fires. And this was, you know, 25 years ago when most British houses didn't have open fires. We've all got them again now. And people went, oh, look at that. It's lovely. You know, there might be a really, really nice property next door, but it didn't have that little spark. Yeah. And that for me is what people got to try to find about themselves. They have that little spark. What's different? Why, why you? And yeah. it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're an accountant or a you know, self catering cottage, there's something about you which is different to everybody else. Yeah. And so what I really do is help people find that and then find the right tools to get that message out there. So in the last 20 years, I've been particularly doing that with the digital industry. I uh, joined a web design company in 2001 after I got made redundant because of the foot and mouth. And interestingly, because I'm not, I'm not the techie geek person, which a lot of people expect I am. Um, mm. I actually bought my first computer that year when I was 31 years old. So I wasn't the guy, you know, sitting at home playing war games. Um, you know, I was out enjoying my life. But I saw this is the way forward. You know, when I've been working in the tourism industry, yes, we, you know, I actually built a website when 1995 or six or something like that, um, using some rubbish program. I could see the change and how things were going. And suddenly we had this media, medium which could communicate so much faster and wider audience. And I remember doing a talk at the National Association of State Agents back in about 2001, 2002, and talking about websites for a state agent. This is before social media, you know, had had existed. And somebody said to me, but are websites going to be any good for a state agent? Are people going to buy a house online? That's incredible. Yes. And you know, you've moved down to this area from up country. Suddenly, people who live up country, rather than having to travel down every weekend to, you know, look at state agent books, boom, 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 boom. They can find so much more. And it's the ones who adapted to that who did well. And that's what I try and do. I try and find the right way and the right message for somebody. And a lot of the time, it's teaching people to blow their own trumpet because we're very British, even the ones who are part German. (laughs) And we're not very good at saying what we do well. If you go to America, you know, they are much more brash. They'll tell you, you know, I own such and such this way, you know, I do this, this and this. If you go to a party and speak to someone who's in business and say, how are things going? They go, oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But they don't often say, oh, it's bloody awful. And they don't often say, yes, it's fantastic. I did this and this. But sometimes you do need to say that and also articulate what you do. And that's the other thing I help people with is say, actually, what have you done this week? What have you done? You know, it was really good in the last month or two yeah. and find other people like that. Yeah. Because if you did a really good job for a, and it doesn't matter what industry you're in. So if you sell houses, well, you sold a great house for Mrs. A and B. Well, let's find other people like Mrs. A and B yeah. because you can show, look, we sold this house and they're just like you. Yeah. So we can do the same thing. Or if you're an IFA or, you know, you're a marketing person or you're a cafe, whatever it is you do, yeah it's much easier to sell to like minded things so that people go oh that's me so when you see an advert on television it's aimed at particular people they don't care about the people who it's not aimed at they're not important and the really interesting thing now is and it's slightly scary is we can target people much more effectively so if you said um you know let's take the state agents as an example back in the day you want to target people you, you put it in the local press you think oh people b- want to buy a house we'll go and get the local press but the local press has only got a certain amount of space and so a lot of the readers aren't buying a house so that space being used up is quite costly 
But if you say, actually, what I want to do is target people in a certain area with certain demographics, they can do it in so many ways. So if you're watching television, you probably don't know the adverts you see on television are geared more at you than everybody else, because actually you might see a different advert to the people next door or the people in the next town, right. because they have this technology now where they can target by postcode, demographic, this type of thing. Even more succinctly is the social media thing where that's so powerful now. What we don't realize, well, some people do, they don't realize how far it goes. You see, to me, that seems like a dark arts. That <laughs> You know, lots of people talk about this stuff, but how, if I was a business person, I wanted to drill down to a particular market niche, then how would we do that? There's a few different ways you can do it. So Amazon is the best example of it, where they've got it so right. Okay. And if any of you have watched any documentaries on Amazon, it scares the hell out of you. So my first tip to anyone who's got one of these Alexa devices at home, when you're not using it, turn it off because it can hear you and it can record you and it will use that data. So the number of people who said, we were having a conversation about such and such, and then this came up because it's all linked in and it can do it. Wow. So it's the, the technology is there to listen, understand, and learn. You know, the AI, as people call it, is so powerful. And it is the way we all work. You know, there will be a day where we won't have to Google to do something. You know, we go, that's a term we didn't know 15 years ago, to Google something. We won't need to do that because, or ask Siri or whatever it is, because it automatically will know it straight away because it knows what we do. So if I'm so, having harsh words with Sarah, and I got one of these devices, then it'll flash up on my screen. You know, here's a book on relationships. Would it? <laughs> and and mediation services. Will oh come my goodness! In. Yes. Me. That they is will find it. Bizarre. And so it is. And a number of people say, "Oh, you know, when I explain about uh, the retargeting adverts, so retargeting adverts work on things like Facebook, but also on websites. Right. So when you've been looking at something, and then you go somewhere else and you see an advert, something you've been looking at, you go, "Oh yeah." So say, for example, you're looking to buy a car today and you go on, you know, what car, Googling or even, you know, Ford or whatever it is. You then go to Facebook, you will see car ads appear in your feed. And because of those cookies that we all say yes to. So it's really powerful for all those people who are targeting. So that's the first way you can target is by people's behavior we've got the cookies we can find out what people do therefore we can target at people right the next way you can target is by other behaviors and things so there's two main ways people use social media um target advertising one is um by building up demographics of people mm -hmm. so what you do is you say okay my my customer is probably age between you know, say this is totally made up 30 to 50. Yeah. They um, probably are social class, you know, CBA type thing. And they earn about this. They're usually homeowners. I mean, you can basically build up a, a profile, an avatar, as we now use it, yes. of, of somebody who's a customer of yours. Yes. You can put that into social media and say, I want to talk, target people like that. And actually, I want to target people just in this area. So you, you know, if it's on Facebook, you can literally put a marker on a map yeah. and then say within such and such a distance, or you can use postcodes or whatever it is. And that will then only show your marketing at that, those people who meet those criteria right. on there. Because we all put so much information into social media and all the cookies are tracking it. So say for example, we're using Facebook as an example. Um, it knows what pages you look at. It knows who you're connected to. It knows which website you came from to go into Facebook and which website you go from, from Facebook to. It also knows other bits and pieces as far as it's legally allowed to do. Right. Um, so that's and the so it's why. got so much information about you it yeah. can do this. The second that, way you can do it, which is quite easy, sorry, is you create what we call a lookalike audience. 
So you know who your audience are. You might even have a database of it. If you're in retail, it's really powerful because you can say, okay, here's my customers. And look, customer A spent 10,000 last year with me. The customer Z spent you know, 50 quid with me. I can put that in and this amount they spend, I use as a, a value field. So it, it wants to match more people like customer A and customer Z. Right. You put that in and then you can target people who are most like those people. So it knows the demographic of your original customers if it finds them, because they're not all on whichever platform you're targeting, and finds people who are lo most likely that. And you can do the 1% of the population who are most like that. And you can do that in a country or the world or whatever. And then you can target particular areas and this type of thing. And I've used that successfully with people and it's so strong. So instead of sending your, your advert out to everybody, you're targeting less than 1% of the population. So is that so expensive they, to do? If I was a business per, person looking to do that, is that an expensive? I mean, I guess what I'm thinking at here, Simon, mm -hmm. where, where do you get the biggest bang for your buck? You know, I'm thinking businesses out there are watching this. They're kind of thinking, right, you know, there's opportunity and adversity kind of going on in the marketplace right now. So, you know, as in any business, you'll be thinking, right, where can I put my money that's going to give me the biggest bang for that book? Is, is that a great way to kind of spend like you've just explained there? At the moment, for a lot of businesses, I think it's the best return on investment. Right. Um, just because it's so targeted, it's still relatively new. Yeah. It's not new because it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. But for most businesses, it's relatively new. So it's still an opportunity for certain businesses some if you go to you're on facebook i know this you go to your facebook profile yeah. let's have a look at what's being advertised to you you can see the industries who are doing it well already yeah. and the interesting thing is it's it doesn't matter whether you're selling 1p widgets or five hundred thousand pound houses <laughs> it can work but it has to be done, and this is where that dark art bit comes in, comes in because it's very easy to spend a lot of money on it. And I've I've seen various industries do it, and I hold my hand up. But you know, I've I've had one this year with a client where it hasn't quite worked. <laughs> I don't think we've got the timing right. You know, I wanted to do it three months earlier, but it, we weren't able to do it, and I felt we hit it at the wrong time. Um, and actually. It's an awful thing to say. The interesting thing about lockdown is it made it even more successful a lot of business because people were so much more on social media. Yeah. But it is getting that message right, getting the advert right. So even if you know all that dark art bit, if you don't get the message right, you're still not going to, to succeed. And you, you'll find that there's lots of people doing the digital marketing for people is you play around with the message. I've actually just done one now where... I've got a um, client where we're targeting people in Bristol, Exeter, Plymouth, um, and other, er other areas. And the advert that's working in Bristol isn't working so well in Exeter, whereas the previous advert worked better in Exeter than Bristol. So you can see different demographics, even though they're this you know, strange 1% who are supposed to be very similar, might be very different in particular areas. So you've got to think about that, work with it, and be prepared to change and evolve. Um, mm -hmm. Just like everything we've been saying, it's the ones who think about it involved because, you know, in a year's time, maybe, something else might come out and say, this is the big new way of you know, targeting people. And so it's, it's changing and evolving is so powerful. Um, and that's one of the things I've seen, having been working in digital marketing for 20 years, you know, like say, 18 years ago, no one had heard of Google. Mm -hmm. um, 10 years ago everyone was talking about email marketing email marketing is still really powerful by the way if you do it right but it's not as powerful as it was you know, at one point um, we've all got websites today will we all have websites in 20 years? probably not um, we'll probably have some kind of app based thing because that's how things are going what, what exactly apps will be nobody quite knows but you know Things are changing. And social media, as we know it, well, that changes so quickly. If, if you talked 10 years ago, all the kids were on Facebook. How many kids are on Facebook today? 
they're all on things that we don't understand. And then you know, we, they talk about TikTok yeah. and everyone goes, what? And then all the adults will go on TikTok and all the kids will go off it. So it changes regularly. And that's how you change and evolve. You've got to think, okay, you've got to try and look ahead, but we can't all do that. But you also got to be, sometimes be you know, reactive rather than proactive and say, actually, we've got to move everything now. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's interesting, isn't it? You know, things like TikTok. I mean, I was I, I can't remember who I uh, read or or heard about this, but the attention span ten years ago of people was this length of time. Nowadays, the attention span of people is this amount of time, and it's almost that kind of um, you know these devices. You know, we live by notifications, and I think that's really sad. And therefore, you know, I think it's more crucial than ever that your marketing message is 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 bigger than just selling a product. I wrote down here as you were talking, you know, people don't care about your products or services. They care about their problems. And so many times I see on marketing, people are flogging products. It's a bit like the IFA market, independent financial advisors. I call them independent financial advertisers because that's essentially all they're doing is they're just flogging products. And actually they're missing the point because, you know, as you and I have said before now, you know, most people have a plan for when they're dead, but they don't have a plan for when they're alive. And to me, that's absolutely bonkers. You know, why would you not do that? So if you get people's life plans first and foremost, then the financial plan should kind of support that. But you still see IFAs out there, you know, pension, 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 ISA, 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 unit trust, unit trust. And actually, I think your marketing message should be more about your why and what your story is, what your journey. I mean, I almost quit financial services, you know, over 20 years ago because I was fed up with the way the profession worked and they were missing the points and here we are 20 years down the line and actually i would say there's probably about five percent of us who are what i call proper financial planners and, <laughs> and that's the sort of thing about in the message it's about well the reason why i almost quit was because this is how the industry works you've got big companies who manufacture products they then go to the independent financial advertiser marketplace saying go and sell this new shiny stuff to your clients and off they do and actually you're missing the point you're missing the point. So I'm just curious in terms of like, you know, how do businesses, whether they're in, you know, retail, you know, wholesale or, you know, service industry or whatever, how do they get their messages out? You know, is it, is it the same, is it the same angle for everyone? You know, you just tweak your cl ideal client's avatar. What's your thoughts on that? It, it's very much finding what's right for you. Okay. And you know that, well, you just walk down, it, walk down any street, and you'll see a different message. And you might see, it, it's like saying where you got, I'm using state agents again, because they did use a cluster, you know, less yeah. so now, but um, you see four or five state agents in the area, because they say, oh, people are looking for a house, they'll look one for one to the other. Each one is different, what they, what they market and target. And how you get your message out there, you use the example, you know, the problem solving is, is, is so important. Well, my other half's got business. She makes organic and natural skincare. And she's got currently four shops and she's got beauty premises as well and a good online business. So, she, you know, we, we did a lot during lockdown on, online. One of the things I said, I said, well, you know, I've actually sat in those shops for her covering, you know, days. That people coming in and because it's organic and natural skincare, it's the kind of thing which is very good for people with sensitive skin or skin problems. Right. And so you had a lot of people come in and say, oh, it's, it's the only thing I can use. And it makes such a sort of, because it hasn't got all the chemical nasties in there, which a lot of, you know, your yeah, yeah. Um, shop bought products have got. So I said, why don't we do, you know, just a little poster uh, targeted at people with, in this case, eczema and psoriasis. So, and it's very, very simple. He said, eczema um, or psoriasis, um, why not try you can't actually say it, you know it cures or doesn't because it doesn't cure it might help yes but from experience the number of people who've helped has been you know quite a lot so we did that and it's literally a real simple little poster masses of people were coming people were walking by and, and i sat in shops and seen it where people were walking by and you know a wife turned to her husband saying look at that and then they're coming and go what's this and is a particular one we were promoting at the time was lavender and calendula body butter. Lavender is very soothing um, oil, essential oil. Calendula is very healing oil. This isn't, you know, old, well, it is old wives' tales. It's if you got a graze on your arm 100 years ago or, you know, um, a rash, 
your granny or your great granny probably would have got some lavender or calendula, which is marigold, and used it, and it probably would help. Right. It, it's not alternative. It actually was the main thing before we came in of ideas. So people try it, and what you're able to say to people is, look, you know, um, a number of people come in, and it's it's made a real difference for them. So they try it, and they go, and that's all about creating a situation where somebody can empathize with. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see with good marketing is actually trying to find the right people and get the right message to say, are you like this? Whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. So the problem one is that kind of thing. I've got eczema or psoriasis, I need help. But the positive thing might be, there's something really good out there. I'd, I'd like to do that. You know, I'm in a situation where I can buy that new car, you know, um, you know, they don't really often show cars driving you know, in a traffic jam. It's on the open road and everybody <laughs> wants to do that. Yeah. So it's selling the dream. You know, if you're selling a house, you don't show the back toilet. You show the best picture, which might be the front of the house, the garden, the view over the sea. You know, if yeah. somebody's coming down from Staffordshire and they want to buy a house in Timmouth, they're probably going to buy the house for the view of the sea, aren't they? Uh, guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> and to the point where the state agents actually have, you know, option, you know, sort by sea views if they're in a seaside town. Right. Um, if you go to a little place called Solcombe where you can buy houses really cheap nowadays, you live on one side of the hill, you can see the estuary, house prices are a lot, lot more than the other side where you've got beautiful views over the countryside. You, got, you live on the other side, you look towards Marlborough. If you know the area, it's a beautiful spire, over rolling fields, anywhere else in the country, be desirable. It's the wrong side. They all want to see the estuary. So that's, you know, it's getting that message across what somebody wants. Yeah. And they, it's what we call trigger. You know, you probably all heard the term, but that trigger that goes, oh, you know, I want that, where it be a bar of chocolate, a sea view, or the Elon Musk Tesla fast car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and it's just getting that across. So you get the message right and then you get it to the right people. And, you know, you know yourself where if you're targeting your customers, you're not going to put it on CBBS. Mm -hmm. You're going to put it on the right channels where your customers are likely to be. In the old days, that might be in the right newspapers or the billboards in the right place. And those still work. Both of those platforms still work. So, some people will say, Ashley, put your, put your marketing on the back of a bus because it's the kind of thing, someone's driving along, they're sitting there, that's where they'll see it. Or the bus stop, I, you know, run campaigns of people where the bus stop's been the most effective marketing. And I think but, actually things have changed a little bit recently as well, you know. Um, I mean, it's interesting what you say there. I think birds of a feather flock together. So you've got to get your right... You've got to get your right source there but in this in this world that, that we're all doing more stuff on digital sort of platforms actually we've switched to sending lumpy mail out you know stuff actually physically in the post um and the feedback that we've had from people that receive that go oh this is lovely because the only stuff i get through the post is usually a bill or something from the tax man you know, um, yeah. and actually we send them something nice with a post. Sometimes it might have a, you know, tea bag in it or some, you know, chocolate coins or something along those lines just to make it a little bit more fun. But it gets your message across in a much more kind of, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, imaginative way. Yeah. And, and it is. And it's, you know, I, I remember when I worked for a web design agency before I set up my own company in 2007, we, we, we met a company who said we can print on anything. So we decided to put our little branding and message on walnuts because it was probably the hardest thing we could think of. And they, they swore at us, but they did it and actually worked. You know, not, I think probably eight out of 10 worked so you could read it. But I, I go out networking and rather than giving a business card, I give out this walnut. And for years afterwards, I was known as a nut man by people because they remembered it. Or I had another one, we, we actually did some targeting because we had a web design agency where we could do technical skills that um, design agencies, graphic design agencies couldn't do. So we did a lot of targeting graphic designers. So there's an example where you, you, know, you go for something and we built a business up on that basically. And one of the things, my, my colleague um, James at the time came up with this idea of putting postcards with a bit of string on it. 
and we came up with little uh, different uh, pictures. You know, there might be a puppet, but the most successful one was the G string. And it's literally a pair of knickers. It wasn't on anybody, it wasn't any rude. It's literally a G string on a picture. And the number of people who said, I kept that postcard. <laughs> so when they needed a web design agency, who did they turn to? They turned to us. Yeah. Because it's stuck in their memories and it was the right kind of message for the right kind of people. You know, if you were sending that out to, you know, solicitors or that kind of thing, it might not, actually probably would do, wouldn't it? But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you target the right people in the right way. And that's the other thing is it's the message you send is for your audience. So you really want to resonate and like say, you get those triggers. So someone goes, yes, I want that. And you, 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 we've all seen it because we all go online and we know what's targeted at us and not, and not at us. And it's getting that message right and then getting it in the right place. It, it's, it's actually quite simple, really. Yeah. So if I was to say to you, what, what, what are the top two or three things keep, people can do right here, right now in order to elevate their, their marketing, get get more kind of people putting their hand up in the air saying, yes, I'm interested in your services. Cause I guess there's lots of businesses out there that want to kind of ramp it up. They want to get more leads, which hopefully will get more conversions into sales, which will more business, more profit, etc. But you need people to put their hand up in the air first and foremost. So right now, Simon, what are the top two or three things that people can do in order to leverage that? Uh, employ me. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> one. I, the first thing is find the right, medium medium to get your message out there now you and i know each other because we've met through business networking so that's that's something that's worth for us so for certain businesses that could be the thing to get out there and get your message out there because if, if you're doing something good and no one ever hears it what's the point yeah so actually business networking can work for people quite effectively um i'll come on something up more about that in a moment I, for me, one of the key things people need to do is talk about what they've done. It's so much easier to sell something you've already done than something you'd like to do. Now, that's difficult if you're not doing it already, but most businesses, you know, if you're already in operation, talk about what you do well. So it might be, okay, this week I've been working on, so I'm talking about my business, you know, I've been working on an e-commerce client where we've been ramping things up, getting the, the, the branding, the, the imagery right. We've got to use a good photographer to get great shots of it, to get that message out there, and then we're going to target it. So I can, I can say to people, look, I work with the e-commerce industry. I can help people. Who's, and look, I can go even deeper. This is a particular type of industry. To right. talk about who you work with and what you've done for them and how it's achieved. Because if you don't do that, People go, well, you know, there's loads of people out there who do marketing. There's no people do that. The other thing with that is who's right for you? Because not everybody would come to Carl and think, actually, Carl is the right IFA for me. Not everyone's going to come to me and think, I'm the right digital marketing person for them. Um, I'm a one-man band. I have people I work with to support, support me on certain things, but I'm not an agency, which will be a big plus for some people and a big negative for other people. Cool. So you, you find the right people. And also, it might be the type of business so or the type of person. Um, you can say, actually, I can make a real difference for you because I understand that I, I am, I'm doing work for a fostering agency mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. And touch wood, very successfully. They're the one the ones, sounds awful, we've done really well during lockdown because we have used that targeted... Uh, marketing where we've got so much more leads and you know we're talking about well they had targets at the beginning of the year we're going to smash those by a long way through what we're doing one of the things that they 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 were aware of is that i was able to say that i've i've worked in the industry before i able to give examples of what i've done but also show them that i understood what they were talking about and that makes life so much simpler yeah. if you if you go in the street and know nothing about it, you can sometimes do really well, but if, if sometimes it helps because you don't have to second guess everything. You can go, well, I understand how that works already. 
I'm coming from the outside, so I'm maybe it's not constrained by the industry, you know, norms that are out there. So I, I don't talk in techno babble that Joe public don't understand, but I also don't do things always the same way because that's the way they all do it. Yeah. But at least I understand how that industry works. So it's much more, e you know, much easier for people to to help people they've got some experience with. So that's a really important thing that people don't do enough is talk about case studies. Uh, I've got a client um, who's a debt collection company, uh, debt recovery, he does free debt recovery. And he had a, somebody came to him and said, no, I, I look for your case studies. I went, okay, I, I get it. Whereas what he had on going on before didn't, you know, so much going on. But if you read a case study, it's the, we did this, we did this, we did this, and that was a result. You go, okay, I guess it now. So that, that's something which I think is probably the most important thing that people can do. And the other thing related to that is the best kind of way of getting business is through referral. So you you talk about your hairdresser there. I go, oh, what's the name of your hairdresser, Carl? I'll come and see them because you obviously had a good experience. That's going to be really good for me to go to. Yeah. If you don't have that, you know, you say, oh, I want a good hairdresser, but you don't know. It's much better to hear who they've worked with and testimonials from their existing client base rather than they saying, we're brilliant hairdressers, other people saying it. And so that's really strong. Yes, we live in a world today where you've got the fake reviews, but most people have got common sense. They can, they can read through those and understand which are the reality. So talk about what you've done, get quotes from people and use those in your marketing, wherever you use them, whether it's on your website, a brochure, your social media, when you're talking to somebody, when you're talking to that potential client, if you're able to say something which resonates with them and say, look, Actually, I do know a bit about that because I work with such and such. They go, oh, did you? Straight away, that door opens up a little bit more. Um, and that's another key thing is have that door open. It's like you walk down the street and a shop door is shut. Mm -hmm. The chances are you'll stand at the window look peering through rather than going in. Yeah. If the door's shut, it's a barrier for you coming in. Yeah, yeah. If the door's open, you're more likely to not feel yeah. out of place, you know, even with the current situation we've got going on, about going into that premises. It's the same with everything else you do. Have the door open, whether it be put your contact details on everything you, you send out. So you send an email out, always have your number, email address on there, website address, whatever it is, social, social media. On your website, make it easy to contact you. Make it easy to, you know, for people to follow up. Actually, you know, the call to actions we call them in marketing. But don't have that door shut. And if you do something like networking, don't just sit in the corner. Don't just never talk to anybody. Don't talk to people you know all the time. Oh gosh, <laughs> we've both been to networking events where you know the type of thing where it's not the organised kind of one where people just chat. And everyone goes straight up to the person they know best and end up talking to them for 20 minutes. Very helpful. Which can be a good thing, don't get me wrong. But yeah. actually, it's the people you've never met before who might be the ones who make the difference to your business. Yeah. So, yes. door open. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that. Is there anything else that you think we should be talking about, Simon? Anything that we aren't covered this morning? I, th I think we've covered most of it. I think it's really just a case of, you know... We're mid-July in a, a unique situation, which you know, is, is so different to anything that's gone before. Mm. It will be the ones who think and evolve who succeed. For sure. I, I use the example of, uh, in the, um, after Wall Street crash in the 1920s, the ones who came out that smelling roses weren't the ones who huddled back in, took all their money in. It's people like, you know, J.P. Morgan and who who invested. He actually saved America, I think, at that point. Um, but they they realised actually to come out of this, we need to start doing things differently. We need to put things in in. So it'll be those businesses that go like you said, where 
you go in there and you go, actually, they've they changed and evolved. In a way, it's almost too late. We should have been doing it before. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, you and I have uh, met through business networking. Well, I've you know, recently started up a new networking group, which is based online. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to this. I've been doing this for donkey's years, talking to people on camera rather than actually going to visit them. I, I do like meeting people. I'm a, I'm a social person. But I've had clients literally all over the world. My, um, when I own a web design agency, my biggest clients were based in Bangkok, Oxford, and just outside Chicago in the US. Now, Oxford wasn't that difficult to get to from Devon, but it was a bit of a pain. Mm. Bangkok and Chicago, well, I, I never went there, unfortunately. That's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> I knew those clients really well because we used this, this digital you know, medium to communicate. And we were able to work with them through that. The same is happening now. People are changing and evolving. So, you know, we started a, a new online networking group because actually people are more used to it now than they were six months ago. Yeah. And straight away, it's open outdoors. As, as you know, we've got people coming who are from outside the area, mm. which you couldn't have done with it today. Oh, we meet in this place just outside such and such, you know, every two weeks. Somebody from Ferro Field, you know, even somebody from Ivy Bridge and Exmouth being in the same group is yeah. unlikely, let alone someone from Staffordshire. Yes. So straight away, things evolve and change. And it's the ones who, who embrace that Agreed. who will come out of this most effectively. So my, my key tip to people would be, have a look at what you do. Think about actually, how can you do things differently, which could evolve and then move forward. And it's really interesting when my other half retail business before they opened up again. So they were shut down. She had a couple of other retailers talk to her and said, you know, are you, are you making any plans for when you reopen? And she went, well, of course I am. You know, that's what I've been doing the last two months. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done a risk assessment. We've done this and that, the other, uh, she got screens in. So all the staff are behind the counter have got a screen. And that was just common sense to her. And then there's other places where they hadn't done anything. You think, well, no wonder you're not going to succeed. And you look at, you know, there's lots of situations out there. The, the pubs that couldn't open, but they started up a takeaway business. Yeah. You know, first of all, it keeps that customer loyalty. Oh. Um, but secondly, it introduces you to lots of people who might not know you, you know, otherwise. So when you do reopen and things are, in fact, comes back to normal, you'll be ahead of the game. And, you know, so much will change out of this, like it does after every big upheaval and it'll be the ones who adapted best yeah definitely definitely and it's interesting how how businesses are, are are pivoting again in that respect so the blue anchor as you know in timoth is one of my favorite pubs here uh, it's a real ale pub but it's it's not like without mentioning names it's not a, like a certain chain pub where people go for the cheapest alcohol possible and get bladdered you know <laughs> it's about um you know i, I like it because you get a real eclectic mix of people there you get people from the dock you know sort of going there you get professional people like us that might go there you know with, with our family um and you get locals you get tourists but you know i'll talk to anybody me and i just love the fact now they've said they're not opening up because they can't do it safely from a social distancing point of view but they have embraced and starting this week they're actually sort of going to do sort of you know take away but you know now they've engaged on facebook saying right you know who would like what what sort of stuff would you like us to kind of sort of provide for you and there's a bit of conversation going on there and i think that's very smart isn't it it's about keeping us all engaged with them and their message and throughout they've been doing that it's been really really clever well thanks for sharing sorry, just, sorry. sorry to interrupt but when i did own the cafe in Tottenham, we had a really small premises which is actually let's widen this living room I, probably the area of the shop was smaller than my living room um and so we had 12 covers so that's 12 seats right we did take away but in a really hot sunny day we didn't do so well because two reasons one was Less people went to Totnes because they all went to Solcombe or the yeah. beach or whatever. Yeah. But the second reason was they didn't want to sit inside a small pokey cafe on a really warm day. Um, they go to places that had outside seating. We were on the main street. We didn't have that. So what I did, literally across the road, was a church which has a, a forecourt. And yeah. they're really nice. They're quite progressive church. And most of the people from there used to come in to get their lunch from us. So I said, look it'd be really nice to do something sometime. And I was thinking maybe one off. 
um, to have some outside seating there. And he said, what a great idea. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give 10% of everything we take, not profit, but 10% of everything we take to your charity, which is a Christian charity helping people in poverty locally. Wow, you know, it Brilliant. worked so well. So by adapting to that situation, we, we got more seats. So suddenly we more than doubled our coverage. It gave us more profile because more people could see it. And of course, on lovely sunny days, we were, you know, rammed to, to, to everything. And we raised money for charity, which is fantastic. So it's things like that. It, it's those simple things that people do differently that will make a difference to their business. And hopefully, awesome. you know, keep us all happy yeah. rather than saying this is, you know, the end of the world, which yeah. obviously it is for some people, literally. Yeah. But also, you know, you know, for a lot of businesses are going to struggle for the situation and some won't be able to change and evolve. No. Um, and it would be interesting to see, you know, in a, an awful way, what certain industries and situations look like. What will the high street look like in two years' time? If there aren't, you know, new regulations on rates and rents, you know, a lot are going to go, um, whether it be January coming up because, you know, we get a second wave in, in, the, in the winter or whatever. Um, hopefully... That's not going to happen, but we shall see. It's like any market conditions. There are always winners and losers in any market conditions. That's that that that's the challenge. Um, and uh, unfortunately, there will be winners and there will be losers. I mean, you know, here in the Bay, you know, we've had some cruise ships, you know, moored out here for, you know, weeks and weeks now. Um, and you do wonder what impact that's going to have on the, the cruising business sort of going forward, because I suspect it'll be a while before they'll be able to open up. But Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with us today, Simon. Uh, as ever, you know, very illuminating. Um, I'm just curious in terms of if people want to kind of reach out and sort of, you know, learn more about you or connect with you, how is it best for them to do that? Well, obviously they can go and have a look at my website, anthera.co.uk, and anthera is spelled A-N-T-H-E-R-A.co.uk. Um, I'm sure you'll put it in the links below anyway. Um, but probably like the couple of the bad shoes my website hasn't been touched for, for a while so um just drop me an email it's simon at anthera.co.uk or because i've got a fairly unique name and I, I think there is one or two others out there i even found um a coin from 1648 with simon dolly on there it's spelled d-o-l-l-e-y but you can usually find me through social media just drop me a line i'm happy to chat and actually we were talking about it beforehand. It, it's one of the things where you've got to understand people. So it, it's really good to have a chat with lots of different types of businesses just to see what's happening because what you talk about will help you with other people and your own business. So I'm always happy to chat to businesses about what they're doing and whether I can help them. And like I say, I might not be the right person for some people. I can probably put them in touch with somebody else. Um, but my main thing is, try and try and see what you can do because like you say there's gonna be winners and losers try and make sure you're a winner and not a loser absolutely uh, that's a nice thing to finish on there i've got to ask you anthera marketing what what, what does anthera mean <laughs> um i actually got the domain name about 15 years ago because i could um anthera.co.uk and it's just a, a word that is actually an obscure greek word um that means to blooming to grow oh, okay and so if i was using excuse my french on social media bullshit marketing yeah i could say oh it's it's all about helping businesses to grow and evolve and that type of thing the reality was i was able to get the domain name a dot code uk which is very useful it begins with letter a so if you're ever on a list it's more likely to hear i higher up uh -huh. and it's quite simple so you know People think too much about branding, I personally believe. No one cares why Amazon's called Amazon, or eBay's called eBay, or McDonald's is called McDonald's. They just go there. But what you do is, is how you get, you know, work around that. So the brand, you know, the style is important to get the message right, but it's what it sits on that's really important. So how the website looks, what the message is that goes with it, um, whatever it is. So yeah, we, we sort of go and analyze 
brands and names a bit too much, but I've got the marketing bullshit when I need to. <laughs> it's very, very uh, bright when you get there as well, because you've got the big yellow sunflowers, isn't it? That, um... It was interesting. I, 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 um, I, I spoke to an old client of mine who's still a friend, and uh, um, the colours are blue and yellow. And it's yeah. not colours I probably use, but it's because I actually thought, oh, blue. And I had a picture of a, of a sunflower on a blue sky, so it worked really well. But also, as well as that lot, I'm a, I'm a sad Talkie United supporter. I said, did you recognize the colors? Because he used to be a, a director of Talkie United. He went, yeah. He said, yeah, really good. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a slight homage to uh, okay. the Talkie United in there as well. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Simon, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, anybody well. watching this and like to reach out, I suggest sort of having a one-to-one -one with Simon and discussing your requirements. We're both here to kind of help and support businesses in the current economic climate. If we can help you, please reach out and do. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Take good care. Cheers, Simon. Thank you. Bye-bye.